Good evening, my beautiful herd. This is Lonesome Pony, and you're listening to Radio 52, the frequency that gives you all the essentials about the Big 52 and nothing else. The acapical tinkering of dual banjos filled a brief intermission. Let's get to work. Have you ever wondered what the sun looks like? Ask White Apples. Last night, a gigantic ball of light exploded ten kilometers east of Salt Cube City, bringing thunder and devastation in its wake. Luckily enough, along said wake were mostly rad gators and abandoned shacks, but the light could be seen clearly, even from Tunnel Town, Badlands, and the Red Shrouders' territory. If you think it's crazy, I must warn you that it was just the last act of a night of follies. First, we have had the launch of a balloon full of ghouls. Yes, the very same ghouls that threatened the caravans in the area. And the takeoff was accompanied by a light and a magical show offered by a certain puppy smiles. Weird name, isn't it? This is the first time I've had something to say about this gal. Good ol' LP asked some more questions here and there, and guess what he discovered? Yes, she's the same filly from Carnival. A trumpet erupted in a triumphant fanfare. So, Lonesome Pony, where's the interesting part? Here it is for all those grumpy, too-long-to-listen busy ponies on the road. No more feral attacks between the Badlands and the Cube. There was a sound of a reloading lever-action rifle, followed by a pair of gunshots and a very manly voice saying, Hasta la vista, Philly! Oh yeah, I love this one. Two tribes get their problems solved by a full stuck in a rad suit. Now I don't need to be a shaman to say that she's heading south. So, what's next? Is she going to reopen the tunnel? Well, kid, if you happen to stop by Trade Station Badlands on the Marsh's Detour, pay a visit to your number one fan. We'll get to know the filly inside the helmet. Until then, have some music from the best radio station you can find along the route. Day 5. Time. Approximately. 16.45 p.m. Location. 165th Brigade Field Headquarters, Salt Marshes. Stop that damn music! I can't hear if he's out still outside or not. The young griffin snapped at Puppy while shooting her an exasperated glare. But, but it's funny. You're a grumpy chicken. The filly frowned and went back to hugging her Pinkie Pie plushie. Don't worry, Silky Tail. She's not mad. She's just a bit tired. Henrietta, the griffin, walked over to Puppy Smiles and grabbed the filly's helmet so that she could look in her eyes. For the last time, I'm not a chicken! There's a frickin' manacore out there that's pinning us inside this place. And you are doing your worst to drive me crazy! The griffin's voice broke in a shrill screech. I hope that my father arrives soon, she sighed. Maybe with his help, we'll be out of here. And I'll never need to see your stupid face again. I'm not stupid. You're a meanie cat. And I don't want to be your friend anymore. Warning. Hostile griffin. Three meters. Threat level high. Ah, shut up, Mr. Voice. Puppy turned her back on Henrietta in a theatrical display of sulking. Shut up, who? Who are you talking to now? The griffin raised an eyebrow. You have a radio transmitter in that thing? With a jump, Henrietta was on Puppy Smiles, trying to take off her helmet. We can call for help. Call my father on 90.08. Codename Blaze. The filly was taken by surprise. Hey, wait. I have to ask Mr. Voice. He lives inside the suit and works on all the weird things. The fool tried waving a hoof to shoo Henrietta away, but the griffin was already stepping aside. Wait, Mr. Voice, that suit talks? Sure does. This is the best space suit ever. It's also super smart. Puppy smiled proudly. Yeah, Henrietta snickered. 
Yeah, I bet it's a lot smarter than you. Sure, smarter than... The frilly smile became a frown. Hey, that's not very nice. The griffin was already laughing. I can't believe you fell for that. You're hilarious. Dumber than a banana pajama. Henrietta smiled and gave the filly a bump with her paw. Hey, stop that, you meanie, mean chicken. If your dad wasn't hurt, I'd already be giving you a lesson. Henrietta froze in place, staring at Puppy. My father what? What do you know about my father? Hope and fear were mixed in on the girl's face, in a concoction that made even Puppy Smiles aware that her next words needed to be very, very careful. Uh, last time I saw him, he was dead. Maybe he got better? The fool smiled, helplessly lost in childish naivety. N my father? Dead? How do you know that? Where have you seen him? This, this can't be. He's the best around. He can't be dead. You're wrong. This can't be true. Tell me it isn't true. The griffin drew her white pistol and ended up puppy. The yellow line along the barrel pointed directly at her nose. Tell me that you're wrong! Puppy met Henrietta's wild gaze. The fool could be a bit slow, but there was no lie in those gleaming pink eyes. Just the absolute innocence of a child. I... I don't know. He wanted me to say that to you that he really, really wanted to be here and he was sorry? I ran here in a super hurry to find you because he was really sad and I felt bad for him, and I lost my mom, too. Enough! Henrietta batted Puppy's helmet with a claw, knocking the foal against the wall, before curling up on herself, trying to hide her face from the harsh reality. This isn't true. My dad's the best hired gun ever. He's okay. I'm sure he's heading here right now. Oh, fuck. I... I... A soft metallic sound made the girl open her eyes. Puppy stood in front of Henrietta. The fool didn't say anything, but took the black gun with the red line along the barrel from her saddlebags and left it next to the griffin before going back to a corner in the small room. Black Rose. The young flyer stared at the gun in surprise as she came to realize what she already knew. Oh no. No, please. This can't be true. Again, she looked at the pony with the yellow suit. Please. Tell me this isn't real. Tell me it's a bad dream. Puppy frowned and looked down. I don't know. If this is a bad dream, then I'll wake up and find my mom waiting for me, so... I also hope that it's just a really long, bad dream. The full side. But I don't think it is. Fuck. Henrietta took the gun in a claw looking at it and examining her own forty-five auto pistol. They were identical in every detail but the color. How did it happen? Why were you there? Keep flying, Henrietta. Don't stop now. You learn from the best. You can do better. You must be better. There were four chickens fly- Stop calling us chickens! We're griffins, and we're better than you filthy ponies. Call me- or another griffin, a chicken again, and I'll make sure that'll be the last time. Capiche? The griffin held Puppy by the neck, keeping her lifted off the ground while she pressed the gun to the filly's chest with another claw. The fool's eyes were filled with fear. Puppy tried to break free, but after a quiet, useless struggle, she simply gave up and began to cry. I, I'm sorry, Miss Griffin. I'll behave. Please stop. Please. Henrietta nodded and put the filly down. Way better. Now, there were four griffins. Where and when? That burst of anger somehow washed away the first shock, helping the griffin to focus a little more on the situation. Puppy Smiles talked fast, trying her best not to disappoint the scary griffin again. It was earlier. I was going down the road with a friend, and they were in the sky. At the beginning, they seemed that they were doing pretty show. But then a lot of them got hurt and fell from the sky, and then they were all dead. I spoke with the last one before he was dead, and he told me to come here and give you that black thing, and said 
to tell you that he was sorry and that he wanted to go south, and then I poked him to make him open his eyes, but he kept sleeping. I tried really hard to wake him. Please don't be mad at me. I really, really wanted him to get better, but he didn't move, and Mr. Voice told me he was dead, and, and... The filly stopped, gasping for air and putting both hooves on her head in an attempt to hide herself. Please stop bullying me. I didn't want to be mean. I just wanted to help. I'm sorry. Fuck. She's just a kid. The griffin hesitated as her anger began to fade. The fool probably didn't even mean chicken as an insult. Nevertheless, someone had to teach her something before she got into real trouble. And guess who that someone is? muttered Henrietta, sighing. The half-eagle patted Puppy's helmet. It's cool. Really? Call me Henrietta or Henry, okay? You just lack some... style. But don't worry. You'll learn. Now, let's find a way out of here. But... but you're mad at me. Puppy was still hiding her head beneath her hooves. No, I'm not mad. Now be a good pony and stand up, okay? But I called you a chicken and I told you that you were mean, protested the filly. Just don't do that again, okay? I scolded you and now we're even. All right. So, so we can be friends? Puppy tried, hopefully. The griffin sighed. Yeah, we can still be friends. Now please be quiet while I think up a plan. Yeah, sure. It was easy to say. Maybe a little harder to achieve. But even those simple words were enough to renew Puppy's happy-go-lucky mood. The filly nodded and sat next to the stairs while the griffin took a look outside. The predator had to be hiding somewhere, probably waiting for them among the wreckage to venture out in the open. And yeah, not good. If only I had something better than my guns. I could hope for a lucky shot, but if that doesn't work... The griffin looked at Puppy. Hey, you don't happen to have a big caliber gun or some high explosives, do ya? I have a rock! It's a super rock! Puppy proudly showed the Rock of Destiny to Henrietta. This made the griffin snicker. Ah, oh, yeah. Exactly what we needed. A rock. Sorry, kid, but I don't think that I'll let a stupid rock decide my fate. The filly tilted her head, then looked a bit confused at her favorite weapon. I don't think that you're dumb, rock. But now it's better that you go back to sleep. Please. I'm trying to put up a plan together here. Stop kissing goodbye to everything you stash in your saddlebags and do something useful like... Henrietta hesitated. Like, ugh. On second thought, just go back and play with Twinkle Sail. Silky Tail! Yeah, that one. Have fun. Okie dokie. The tea will be served in five minutes. Puppy sat down on the stairs, talking to the stuffed Pinkie Pie from her bag. Yeah, whatever. Now, the griffin lowered her voice to a mumble. There's no decent cover, and I'm not sure that I can outrun that thing more than a couple minutes. We have to face it, but we lack the firepower. Henrietta sighed in distress. This is ridiculous. Those tanks are full of high-explosive ammunition, and we're stuck here with 345s and a rock. In the meantime, Puppy sat her doll on a large, flak 8.8 .8 projectile, while using another one as a teapot to serve tea. Hey, do you want six or eight sugar cubes in your cup? Uh, do you have a cup? No, thanks. I think I have a plan. The griffin said without even bothering to turn back to the foal. I'll run outside and get the manacore's attention. After the manacore starts chasing me, you'll sprint to the nearest tank and get inside. You'll have to be fast, because I can't distract that thing for long. When you're in the tank, you have to look for H.E. ammunition. They're big and shiny, like a big can with a pointy head. You should have see a red band around it, so they're easy to identify. All right? Uh, yeah? Bobby looked away from her teapot, shrugging and putting it away. You just keep an eye on Silky Tail, okay? I don't think your doll's going anywhere while we're out. 
and just go inside the tank, grab the big can with the red line, and run back here. And when you're done, I'll explain the second part of the plan. The griffin crouched, readying herself for a jumping start. She'd need all the speed she had. But she'll be afraid! That filly was a constant source of idiocy and distraction. Puppy, Twinkle Sail is just a doll. It can't be afraid! Henrietta walked her over to the stuffed Pinkie Pie slash Silky Tail, grabbing it and whipping it around in front of the filly. See? She's smiling, so she's okay. Maybe when we're back, she'll sh throw us a... H.E. Flack 88. The griffin's eyes focused on the object being used as a chair for Puppy's toy. Pardon me. Where did you find this? The filly in yellow smiled. Softer gave me Silky Tail in the glow. No. I mean this one. The chair. Oh, that? It was inside a broken, super huge metal cart. It's shiny and clean. I've got plenty of them. From the expression on the griffin's face, Puppy felt like she had to say something more. Do you want one? Henrietta's left eye went twitchy-twitch. Okay, great. Part one done. Now part two. What? But we didn't even... No. Just... No. I said part two. Let's never speak about part one again. The griffin's self-control was considerably improving. Listen carefully. I'm trying to lure Mr. Big Bad here to the tower entrance. When the manticore pokes his head in, you have to throw the shell into its mouth, and then I'll shoot it. The head goes boom, and no more bullies, got it? Puppy frowned. So, I throw the teapot inside the jaws and the movie ends? The what? Yeah. Sure. Throw that thing in the manticore's mouth and I'll do everything else. Now get ready, and don't be scared, okay? Okie dokie. The filly hugged the shell and hid herself behind the wall while Henrietta cautiously stepped out of the building with her wings outstretched. Not even a minute later, the sounds of gunshots came from outside, followed by the voice of a griffin who was teasing the manticore with a lot of words that puppy had never heard before. The foal was super duper curious about what was going on outside, but she had been told to wait and stay put. Now, this was a dilemma. If Henrietta found out, her out of place, she was going to be really mad, and that girl was really scary when she was mad. On the other hoof, Puppy was sure that there was something totally cool going on just a few steps away from her. Maybe I could just peek a little. Outside, it was raining lead, while roars thundered in the storm of battle. Just one. It wouldn't hurt, right? The filly slowly crawled down to the door. Always hugging her H.E. shell and looking outside. Sneaky. Sneaky. Ah, I can't see a thing. This isn't fair at all. Suddenly, a blurry silhouette came speeding through the door, rushing the opposite side of the room and yelling, Now! Now what? Asked Puppy, a little surprised. Snarling and scraping at the concrete, the manticore appeared at the door trying to get inside but being held out by its size. Puppy found herself looking at the snapping jaws of a fell beast just a few inches away from her helmet and yelped, backpedaling. What are you doing, puppy? Throw that thing now and die for cover! The urgency in Henrietta's voice danced with a panic in her eyes. Move that cutie mark! The filly in yellow nodded and tried launching the shell. The high-explosive round described a straight trajectory through the air while Puppy jumped as far away as she could. When the explosive ammunition hit the ground right below the beast's head, the griffin opened fire. Three shots, three hits, three bounces. Fuck! The case is too thick, I can't penetrate it! The gunslinger girl swore and emptied another, both pistols against the stupid explosive shell with no avail. It's not working! Henrietta put away one of her guns and took out a third pistol. This one was red with a white line along the barrel, but in everything else, it was identical looking to the other two she had. Unloading the gun directly in the manticore's muzzle, she succeeded in making the monster slow down her assault for a moment. I think he's trying to make the door larger. 
Puppy stepped back another couple of meters, but now she seemed a lot less scared. The fool tapped her helmet as if she was pondering the situation. He's good. The beast was looking at Henrietta with bloodlust in his eyes. It was clear enough that he wasn't going to lurk any longer, even if it meant tearing apart the whole tower. The real issue was that the manticore was actually tearing the building apart. Maybe not a very fast, but he was getting there. Now just stand there. Come here. The griffin reloaded her pistols. We can still make that thing go boom if only I can hit the detonator. You just stay low. I'll try something. What's a detuna Thor? Henrietta launched herself towards the manticore, ignoring Puppy's question. With a leap, she arrived at the, with a couple of slashes of, just out of the beast's reach, and pointed the gun at the shell. Say goodbye, Jose. Too late. The young fighter noticed the predator had its head reclined and its back arched. Henrietta was half feline too. She had to know how much a manticore could stretch. She should have known better. But now the cat had just fallen into the lion's jaws. He didn't even give her time to swear. In that moment, the manticore stretched out and struck the griffin with a claw, hitting her in the shoulder and grabbing her with his mighty talons. Henrietta screeched in pain and instinctively, but uselessly, pecked and bit at the monster's claw. Puppy smile screamed in terror, too. The filly had tried to back away further, but her rump was already pressed against the wall. This manticore was terrible, but even worse, he was hurting Henry. For a moment, Puppy didn't see the manticore, but a pink metal face with blinking blue eyes. Please, <laughs> make this end. Puppy's eyes flared with pink flames as she raised a hoof. Rock! As soon as the Rock of Destiny was in her hoof, the filly launched herself against the beast. Let her go! Let her go now! The manticore immediately spotted the yellow critter assaulting him, and instinctively turned his head, closed his jaws on her, tossing his old prey aside. The fangs of the monster closed on the little filly, crushing her with a dry, crunching sound. Henrietta fought to stay conscious while she staggered across the room, trying to reach the stairs. In the meantime, the manticore let out a triumphant roar that sealed once and for all Puppy's fate. No. No. It's too late. Save yourself, gal. Don't turn back. Weakly, the wounded griffin climbed a couple of steps, but the pain was driving her crazy. The manticore behind her was howling in a bloody, ponycidal rage, probably tearing apart and dismembering every limb of the poor corpse. Henrietta took a healing potion and swallowed it in a single gulp, then fell face down as her sight began to fail her. Henry tried to turn over to see what was going on, and why the atrocious beast kept roaring and howling, but all she could see was a thick, pinkish smoke and nothing else. Then the griffin lost her battle against the staggering pain and fainted. Now please, let's have a minute of silence in memory of the truly unfortunate Manticore. And this is why rule number one says no biting. Never. It could be spoiled. Day six. Time. Approximately. 1.45 a.m. Location. 165th Brigade Field Headquarters. Salt Marshes. Systems successfully rebooted. All functions restored. Diagnostic systems online. Subject 001. Puppy Smiles. Female Earth Pony. Subject. Deceased. Condition. Stable. All clear. Puppy lazily opened her eyes and yawned. But it's still dark outside. She had the unpleasant sensation of something heavy landing on her back. What happened? Where's the chicken and the big meanie kitty cat? Analyzing. Hostiles detected. Six meters east. Henrietta. Threat level, negligible. A single red dot was blinking on the compass. Silly voice. Henry's not an enemy. The dot turned pink. Okie dokie. Let's go to... Hey! The filly moved her hooves, but this didn't make her go anywhere. Bobby looked down to see that she was hanging from some sort of gray perch. It looked like more than a couple of tries to break free from the skull of the manticore. 
The skeleton of the beast had turned the same color as the wall, and seemed to be partially stuck inside it, as if the animal and the wall had been melted together. The large head full of teeth was open in a eternal roar, while his wings stretched out, desperately trying to free itself from the deadly cloud that had consumed him. Puppy Smiles trod over to Henrietta, but the griffin was lying on the stairs, giving no signs of life. Mr. Voice? Is she... Y you know... Uh... Dead? Analyzing. Negative. Subject is unconscious. Oh... Uh, that means she'll be okay, right? Affirmative. Subject is recovering. Okie dokie. That was enough for Puppy. She smiled and kissed Henrietta goodbye through her helmet. I'm sorry, but I have to go, chicken girl. My mom is somewhere on the other end of this arrow. Puppy trot some meters away, but then stopped and frowned. Somehow she felt that just kissing goodbye this time wasn't enough. The filly went back to Henrietta, took the Pinkie Pie doll from her saddlebags, and put it under one of the griffin's paws. Here, Silky Tail. Look after Henrietta. And don't let anything bad happen to her. Now it was really okay. Puppy trot outside and retrieved her scooter. Hey, can I have some music? Day 6. Time. Approximately 10 a.m. Location. Griffin's Fall. Salt Marshes. Digging in a marsh without a shovel was already torture itself. But digging your father's grave in this muddy terrain with your bare claws was... No. Just no. Tears dropped from the griffin's beak while she swallowed pain. Every time she tried deepening the hole in the dirt, it was filled again with murky water. But she kept digging in silence. He could never bear her crying. He was the most hardened badass mercenary ever. And now he was dead. Killed by talons. Henrietta dragged the dead body to the shallow hole and pushed him inside. The corpse settled into the mud with a gurgle. The daughter watched the blood-stained feathers sinking in the pool and tried her best to fight back tears. Fuck. He wouldn't even sink in completely. Not fair, man. Leaving me alone like this. What am I gonna do now? Henrietta sighed. She tried being mad at him, if only to find a weapon against grief. But it was hard. He was gone. So now, what? Why you? Fuck. Just fuck. The griffin began filling the grave again with the mud, and all the stones and asphalt chunks she could find nearby. With the last stone in place, Henrietta stared at where his beak was just visible moments before. She took out the black gun and hesitated, then put it away again. Instead, she plucked three feathers from her right wing and planted them where she knew her father's chest would lie forever. Tell Mom I'll be fine, okay? Henrietta rubbed her eyes with one claw while she rummaged in her bags with another, retrieving Silky Tail. The griffin looked at the smiling blue eyes of the stuffed doll and tried to smile back. I'll be fine. Day 6 Time, approximately 11.30 a.m. Location, random encounter location, salt marshes. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. One of the three slavers, a black earth pony, frowned. I think I heard that name before. Maybe we should just pass on this one. He looked at the other two ponies. They were all well armed, but over the last two days... Lonesome Pony kept rambling about some ghost infesting the northern branch of the Big 52. I'm not afraid of ghosts dripping blood. But if a fool scares the shit out of you, then just keep an eye on the other slaves. The leader of the slavers, a yellow unicorn, glared at his meager haul. A couple of stallions and a falling mare, way below the quota. Forty nails, catcher. Puppy Smiles was a bit uncertain. There were six dots on her compass, but half of them were pink and the other half were red. This had to be another weirdness by Mr. Voice. One of the ponies marked with a red dot approached her cautiously, and put a hoof on her back. 
Now come with us, and don't resist, kid. Okie dokie, where are we going? The filly in yellow smiled with enthusiasm. Apparently her behavior was quite odd for these newcomers. The newest pony, a green unicorn, looked over to his boss, who shrugged and encouraged him. See? Easy peasy. Now put a collar on and let's move. Forty Nails tried to open Puppy's suit, but he wasn't exactly a Ministry of Peace technician. Uh, hey boss, this thing won't, uh, open. Uh-huh, I can't take it off, too. It's super stuck. I even tried hitting it, but it just keeps repairing itself. At last, some pony was helping Puppy with the spacesuit problem, but they didn't seem anywhere skilled enough. I think there's some sort of button to press here and there, but they don't work. Shut up, retard. Forty was losing patience and decided to go medieval on the whole problem. It's clobbering time. He held up a hydraulic wrench and brought it down hard on Puppy's helmet, creating an intricate network of cracks that ran across its surface. The yellow unicorn roared. Hey, if you break her head, I'll break yours. A dead foal is worth nothing. The black slaver kept an eye on the other three slaves, snickering at the scene. Puppy stepped back again. Hey, that's dangerous. Warning. Compass malfunctioning. Warning. Sensor system offline. Warning. Helmet integrity severely compromised. Repair system activated. Fucking son. It's a hard nut to break. The green unicorn raised his weapon again, only to see the cracks in the helmet were already closing. What the fuck? He hesitated. Just tie her up with a rope and let's get going. We'll see to that once we're out of this shithole. Puppy was told to behave, so she behaved while the pretty ponies put a noose around her neck. It was only when they tried dragging her, the other slaves, that she began feeling something wrong in the air. Hey, I can't leave my ride here. The filly trot towards her scooter, but the slaver holding the rope pulled her with a sudden jerk. Where do you think you're going? Puppy kept smiling. My scooter! Let me go! Forty Nails snickered. Yeah, sure, bitch. He pulled the filly close and looked in her eyes. You're a slave now. Forget your scooter and everything else. If you want to stay alive, you stay put. Got it? Uh, but I have to go there. Puppy pointed a hoof south. The green unicorn snorted and hit her on a flank with the butt of his hunting rifle. Shut up. And open your ears. Or I'll rape you hard. Rebel ponies are bad commodities anyway. Forty turned to the slave leader. Hey boss, I'm teaching this one a little respect. Don't mess her up or you'll be paying for her. The leader shrugged without even turning back. The filly in yellow frowned. I don't think that's a nice word. She seemed completely unfazed by the first beating, so the green slaver gave her a stronger blow. Shut up! Puppy was sent flying, landing a few meters away. Hey, some pony could get hurt. She got up from her hooves, giving no sign of pain, and earning a worried look from Forty Nails. But, but what are you? Fuck off and stay down! The slaver aimed his rifle and shot two bullets into the foal. Two hits, two holes in the filly's chest, and still no reaction from her. Forty's eyes widened in terror. In the meantime, the leader turned on his minion. What the fuck are you doing, you fucking son of a fucking drug addict? This is the last time you kill a slave. The yellow unicorn charged the green pony head on, sending him flying through the air. No, I'm not going to die here. In a state of utter panic, Forty turned his rifle against his boss and emptied the magazine. One of the unicorn's legs exploded before he could even realize what was going on. The slave leader fell to his knees, pulling out his assault rifle and spraying bullets all around. The black earth pony that had kept silent until now unsheathed a shotgun, but was hit by the raging boss along with one of the slaves and puppy smiles. The bullet pierced the foal in at least three different holes, but didn't seem to affect her much. 
Stop quarreling, please. Hey, I'm I'm talking to you. Puppy tried to restore some order, but this brawl seemed to be a bit beyond her capacity. You are all bad ponies, and you should feel bad. Mr. Voice, do something. Repairs finished. Containment fully restored. Subject 001 Puppy Sized. Deceased. Condition stable. All clear. Not that something. Something something else. Puppy pouted. The black slaver staggered, trying to retrieve a health potion, but the unwounded stallion slave rammed forth, taking his gun and emptying it into his sorry muzzle. The wounded slave fell to the ground, coughing blood while the pregnant mare tried to find cover behind the armed slave. Forty nails exhaust exhaled his last breath, and even the leader was rapidly bleeding to death. But he didn't want to hit Hell's Door alone. The glow of magic and a remote control appeared on his saddlebags. Willie coughed blood, trying to laugh. And don't fear, <laughs> little pony <coughs> ponies. You're going to precede me. <coughs> he raised his good hoof, hit the detonator on the slave's collars. The two surviving slaves looked at him in horror. No toys for the meaning pony. A yellow hoof took the detonator from under the slave leader's muzzle. Puppy was looking at him with her best scolding look. I said stop being crazy. I'll keep this thingy until you behave. The filly gave a theatrical pause. And I'm dead serious about this. The slaver looked at Puppy and snickered. I can't, I can't believe this. I heard that story about the ghost. His eyes focused for a moment on the last scratches of Puppy's suit as they disappeared completely. Hell. You're <laughs> fucking scarier than I could have, than I could have ever imagined. <sighs> the slaver's voice died as his life dripped away into the thirsty wasteland. Day 6. Time. Approximately 8.30 p.m. Location. Tunnel Town Outskirts. Big 52. North Branch. So, when Mommy Pony loves Daddy Pony super special much, they write a letter to Princess Celestia and ask for a little fool. You really didn't know that? The filly trotted and galloped all around as she talked. It had been a long time, but luckily an eventful walk through the salt marshes. With the endless pain of murky pools was behind them, giving way to an area of barren hills. Now it was possible to... In the darkness of the night, see any suspecting movement from a good distance. Puppy's HUD flashed here and there with red dots, but they were mostly wild animals scared by the filly's supernatural presence. The pair of ponies traveling with puppy smiles were a bit of distress. It was the pregnant mare, a milky unicorn by the name of Sweet Flower, who spoke first. Well, yes, it works more or less that way. You're quite a chatty filly, aren't you? Yep. Every pony keeps telling me that. Puppy smiled and completely changed the topic. I hope that you get a filly. Fillies are the cutest. She lowered her voice. Besides, I heard the colts have cuties. It's true. Sweet Flower giggled and nuzzled her companion, a brown earth pony named Asso, in the neck. She's a bit... right, isn't she? Aso laughed. I just know it's gonna be awesome. The stallion stopped trotting and looked in the distance. Here we are, little one. It's the tunnel. The brown pony pointed a hoof to the small group of lights perched on the middle of a steep mountain wall. A large bridge, formed by many stone arches, rose from the swamp, climbing directly towards a mountain-like highway in the sky. Puppy's eyes widened in awe, at the sight of such a marvelous thing. It seemed like the road shot upwards like an arrow of awesomeness, and then BAM! It has appeared into a show of colored lights. The filly's two companions were way more interested in her. The foal's eyes shone in the dark, a bright pink light that surrounded the helmet in a ghastly halo. Okie dokie. So, we go now? Mom's waiting for me to find her in there. The foal asked enthusiastically, and epically failing to notice the alarmed looks the other two gave. 
Uh, well, we don't live there, and you need to pay a fee in order to get inside Tunnel Town. We're heading into Trade, the Badlands. It's a small hub along the detour. At that point, Tasso hesitated, but the mayor nudged him, encouraging her mate to speak his mind. After a brief pause, the stallion lowered his eyes and continued. I... We have to know this. Are you really a ghost? Some sort of guardian angel sent here to protect children? Puppy tilted her head and giggled. I'm Puppy Smiles, Mr. Silly Pretty Pony. I don't know why every pony keeps calling me a ghosty, but I'm still just looking for my mom. Yeah, you told us about that a million times. Asso gave a tired smile at his mate and shrugged. Well, I guess this is all. We owe you our freedom, somehow. So, thank you. I wish I had something to repay you with, but we need nearly everything we got just to get home alive. Okie dokie. Goodbye, pretty ponies. Puppa waited until her new friends disappeared from sight, then merrily trot up the bridge towards Tunnel Town. Footnote. Level up. 5. New perk added. Intense training. Strength has risen from 5 to 6. You can has lots of things.